Hi, everybody. I'm Scott. I'm John. And we're Sweet Tino Shade We're also married. Oh, and we're married. <laughs> it's It's right. been a hot minute since we've done one of these. So yes. we're a little rusty. It's been, I think, eight months. Yes, I was going to bring up the fact that uh, Betty Ann has finally wore us down and has um, texted me every week for eight months. Um, have you recorded an episode? Have you recorded an episode? And so... And we, we like, blocked her and got new devices and social media the whole time, and, yes. like, she still tracks us down. Yes, the so, Betty Ann is my mother. Yes. Many of you who watch us know that, but for those of you who are wondering who this woman is, she is she is a uh, force to be reckoned with, let's just say. She is. And um, also, it's St. Patrick's Day. Yes. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Which... I believe is some type of uh, important feast day in Ireland, but mm -hmm. not the let the whole country get drunk and dye everything green holiday that it is in the United States. Yeah. Amer also, I don't think in the United, I don't think in Ireland they do the thing where if you don't wear green on, on St. Patrick's Day, they pinch you. I, Did I, you do that in school? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that's something they do in Ireland. Right. Um... Other important things, um, last Friday, on the Ides of March, appropriately, appropriately. Um, Betty Ann turned Yes, she was born in mm -hmm. and so that makes her That's true. And um, we never thought she'd live to see her um, birthday. What's that? Like, you know, when you say like, your golden anniversary and stuff like that. So, the birthday is the birthday oh i see and yeah. then and then because betty ann is betty ann so you know like most people get traditional gifts for anniversary and stuff like that mm -hmm. she has a list of what we're supposed to get her every year that's true um so last year for her birthday um i got her a i think this was her birthday i got her a subscription to fat quarter shop um, to their cross stitch. She's she's more into cross stitch these days than she is into knitting. Right. So, um, and I, being the bad son that I am, have not gotten her a gift for her <laughs> birthday, which was this year. To be fair, what she wanted was a rattlesnake. Right. So we have not been to places where we can get rattlesnakes. So how would you even ship a rattlesnake? Do you think Betty Ann cares about that? That's true. She's like, I want my rattlesnake. It's my <laughs> birthday. It's my year. Right. So, um, happy birthday, Betty Ann. Happy birthday, Betty Ann. Consider your, the, well, maybe this could be her present, is this episode. So okay. I, I don't want to do precedent on that one. <laughs> That's true. Because <laughs> then she'd be like, oh, it's Mother's Day. Do a MEP episode. Yeah. Oh, it's July 4th. Do an episode. That's true. Oh, oh. it's President's Day. Do an episode. Exactly. Exactly. Because she's the president of us. Yes. So, but anyways, it's been a while. Um, and I am just getting logged in here to Ravelry just in case we need to look up any patterns or anything. Yeah. Um, because we're, I'm... Because I think our last episode was in July of last year, 2023. <laughs> I thought um, you said it was June. Might have been June. Yeah. I can't remember. Um, so it was fun because, like, we were trying to remember what we did in the last year for projects, and it was kind of like archaeology. I was like running around, like looking in project bags, um, looking on Ravelry. It's like, okay, what did I download? And um, I think I found most of it, but some of it is probably lost to history because I'm just like, I don't know. So, um, yeah, and I did that thing where I got paralyzed a couple times where I either didn't enjoy the project that I was doing mm -hmm. or I don't know, just whatever. Well, you, so, have, you, you, you'll talk about the hat cause that was kind of, yeah, I do. When, when things don't go perfectly, mm -hmm. which they never do because that would be weird. Um, I get discouraged and then I get paralyzed and I mm -hmm. stop knitting. So, yeah. um, I've broken through that a little bit. Um, I'm Achow. definitely in more of a knitting mood these days. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we've so. done some fun stuff in the last year or so, which we'll talk a little bit about as it relates or is adjacent to knitting. Um, yeah. So we've got, like John said, we've got works in progress, finished objects, and then something that we've been doing um, for, oh gosh, 
years probably at this mm. point is i forgot that we had done it before with the angela lionsbury movies mm. but we watch uh movies right now we're watching the razzie winner and the oscar winner for best picture um random years and then we do little mini reviews of them do little mini reviews yes they'll and be so, kind of a little minier this time because well um, if you're watching this after the fact like not if you don't watch like, so eight months ago we're like okay next episode we're going to talk about um no country for old man men and i know who killed me right we're, um and you, you get to guess which is which <laughs> um but and then it was like okay so next week we're gonna talk about that and then it and then eight months passed and so if you remember those movies or know those movies or whatever um great uh, you know we'll, we'll have the movie review at the end of the episode otherwise just when you get to that point, pause the video, go watch both movies, and then come back and finish the episode. I don't know if I'd actually recommend anyone see watch I Know Who Killed Me. I feel um, like... No, that that one was ba ba so bad it was good. That one was so... <laughs> we I have to agree to disagree I went back one. and watched... Um, and maybe it's nostalgia. It's uh -huh. the rose-colored glasses mm -hmm. from the past or, or whatever. Or blue, blue-colored glasses. Blue and red-colored glasses. <laughs> but I went back and watched a YouTube video, another YouTuber review mm -hmm. it, and I was like, oh my god, I forgot when her finger falls off. <laughs> just and she's like, no, it's not a big deal. P only rich people can afford hospitals, so I'm just yeah, gonna let okay. my finger fall it off. Is, I, I would say <laughs> that I Know Who Killed Me is kind of when you think about like a Razzie-worthy film. It got like eight Razzies. I know, year. I know, but it, we it, should we should ask. So we have a friend, Chris Bolt, who's hilarious and likes to watch bad movies. We should have him over and watch that movie with him. Yes, he would like that. He would love that. Okay. Anyway, so that's kind of the um, episode in a nutshell. Um, thank you for um, sticking with us through our long hiatus. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just our our thing is like when we feel motivated to do this, we do this because. But and then it, Scott gets tired and sad, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we don't do it for a while. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. So um, okay. So um, do you want to go first? Sure. Well, let's let's see here. I have one, two, oh, God, hang on, three. Wait, one, two, three, three finished objects, four finished objects, and two works in progress. I need to borrow your, oh, some glasses sure. to read my notes. Jeez. Yeah, I don't remember if we wa if we were reading glasses eight months ago on the podcast, but we it's probably should real. It's, yeah, it's no, gotten it's, real bad. It's gotten so. So, um, so we're doing the thing where we have you know sixteen pairs of these all over the house, and so we it's, still can only ever find two. Right. It. You know, it's like our house is basically um, cheaters and um, stitch markers. Cheaters is not a. These are reading glasses, people. We call them cheaters. Oh. I think that might be a southern thing or a Minnesota thing or something. Okay. Because I said cheaters to Betty Ann. She didn't know what I was talking about. Well. So. All right. So I have... I'm sorry. What did you say our house was? Cheaters and what? Stitch markers. Oh, and stitch markers, yes. So I have one... When the house burns down, <laughs> right. all that will be left are cheaters and stitch markers. So I have one, two, three finished objects. I have more finished objects. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting a few. Um, and then I have two works in progress. And I think that's it. And I've got a, I've got one purchase, I think. Did you do... I, I'm looking at your notes here. Yeah. Did you do No Country for Old Men, but not the other one? Yeah, we, we split them. I know that, but how do you remember how we split them? You know how I remember who's in movies and stuff like that? It's the same part of you my You remember brain. that it was my turn to do the Razzie one? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Okay. Well, maybe <laughs> I took notes for it somewhere. I don't know. I'll just I'll just um, extemporaneously speak it. But you said you just watched some videos about it. That's true. So, yeah. 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 But I didn't... You've got, like... I just have, I'll like... I'll look that stuff up and yeah. read it. Yeah. It's time. basically... Yeah. We will... I'll go first so you can figure out the Okay. Template. People are bored. Would you like to go? You can edit this out of here. I'm happy Whatever. With it. Okay. I would like to go first. So... Um, the first thing I did, and this is something that we'll have to um, pull up some pictures for. So this was one of my um, archaeological findings. Um, so, <laughs> I know. So every year, the Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus has a fundraiser, and we have donated socks, we've donated knitted, knitted objects to it, and this year, um, for the one in February, I knitted a cowl for it. Um, it's the Random Axe Cowl. 
random x random x random x x x x what is wrong not a random x random x random acts x like act 1 act Correct. random acts there you go um cowl um, it was designed for the 2022 um, Progressive East Project um, Knit Along. Oh. Yeah. I See, so, there's all these things that I forget till we do our podcast. Yeah. So it was the, what do they call it? The PEEP? Yeah, the PEEP. The Progressive so, I, East End Project. <laughs> I wrote right. it down. Okay, because so, la- the year before last it was that river scarf, right? Yeah, or a couple, or no, no, this is years three ago, years ago. Yeah. So, um... Every year, um, there's Minnesota, or the metro area, Minneapolis, St. Paul, where we live, has a bunch of yarn shops, and all the ones on the east side, which is like St. Paul and the suburbs, get together. Um, They have one of the um, local designers, I believe, create a pattern, and they sell kits for it. And so this was the Random Axe (laughs) Cowl um, by Elizabeth Finn. Uh, This is the 2022 one, and... um, I bought my pattern, so they sort of assembled kits, um, and I bought my pattern at Three Kittens Needle Arts, which is our, kind of one of our local yarn shops. shops. So it is completed. Um, it has been given away and auctioned, so someone out there has it. Um, I don't know who, but I've got some pictures of it here. Um, okay, so we'll insert pictures, and then... And so what I can show you, though, is an archaeolo- so. Basically, it's a, you sort of see from the pictures, it's a colorwork shawl, I mean, colorwork cowl, and um, here are some of the colors I have left. So, this is kind of messy, but yeah, whatever. This is going to be making noise. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so, um, I really, really liked this pattern. You need Betty in here because she likes to ball up little bits and pieces of yarn everywhere. Yeah. So I, I think y'all can... She's oh. like a dung beetle that way. <laughs> oh my God, you're so mean to your mother. She's done, been nothing but nice to you for her mm. years. Mm. Um, so anyway... Oh, there's so, not much list. It's not yeah, no, I was I kind of yarn chickened this one. Um, so the cool thing about this cowl is... This is the main color, but it was really kind of the color of the back, the background. And then this would have been, this is one color of one of the stripes. This is the color of one of the other, the pattern, one of the other stripes and so on and so forth. So really fun pattern. Um, very forgiving of errors. Mm. <laughs> um, but I think it, turned, turned it was out, beautiful. Turned out really, really well. Um, I wish I knew the yarn. Um, because it was really lovely, lovely yarn. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna. Ask. Is this not Malabrigo Rios? No, I don't know what. Okay, it, well I'll say it has the. Oh, this so look one of feel. this is uh, we know this one. Um, this is Alexandra, the art of yarn. Um, it's one hundred percent superwash merino. Um, Seal Rock is probably the the um, the yarn base. The yarn base. And it's in goldfish. So this is goldfish. And is it worsted? It's three. Oh, it's DK. Sorry. It's DK. So and I don't. I honestly don't remember. This is a set of minis, I think, and I don't remember what they were. Um, but um, kudos to the people at Three Kittens Needle Arts. They picked out really, really good colors. Um, even though <laughs> I had a hard time. This is like where. So there were like kind of three. Those two are the same. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. These two are the same. No, they're not. Okay. These so, are these are different. No, they're not. They're different balls. Well, that doesn't mean anything. You only had one ball per color? Yeah. Okay. They're slightly different. This is a more... I know I'm colorblind, but those are different. So yeah. now I don't feel so bad about like confusing those. No, I mean, I I, really... I would not, I cannot tell the difference between these two. Okay, maybe I'm having a psychological reaction. Maybe I, I don't know. I don't know if this is I feel they're a little, the camera. this, this one's is a... a little redder. Sure. Okay, so yeah. anyway, 
This one, I can tell the difference between this and that. But anyway, it was really, really fun. And there's one more color that I ran out of, which is kind of a wood, a brownish wood color. But I really loved the combination of the colors with, I mean, I just think like, I would never put these two colors together, <laughs> right? If I'm doing something. Unless it was something for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, but I just, it just wor worked really well. It was really beautiful. It looked like kind of old, um, brocade almost yeah i was gonna say it's like had like a tudor elizabethan I yeah can't, i don't know what, there's a there's a, a, a regal a, a tudor eleganza realness to it um <laughs> yes, which i really cool. liked and so what i did i don't know if you can tell from the pictures or not so i did a mobius strip with the cowl um and i started trying to um graft it together but that just became too much my little brain so i ungrafted it and um, just sewed it together. And so I think it turned out really, really well. You don't have it. Do you have it in your Ravelry page? In my Instagram. On oh, your Instagram. And I've got okay. some more pictures, too. Okay. So um, the um, pictures are modeled by our lovely neighbor, Jenny. So, um, yeah. Cool. Super fun project. Um, I believe the pattern, the pattern is on um, Ravelry. Um, there's kind of two versions of it. Oh, there's actually four versions of it. There's a crochet version. Um, Did you say who the um, designer was? Elizabeth Finn. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have my Ravelry because I got the clues downloaded directly, sent directly to me. Gotcha. Um, but, um, yeah, there's like one... Oh, where... Elizabeth Finn is the owner of Knitting from the Heart. Oh. Which is a local yarn shop. And, and, and it's Sonia's local yarn shop. Okay. Our friend so or yeah. My friend, my... Um, she's now, she's now retired, but right. she was on our, um, one of our podcasts. She was on our, I think our episode two. Right. So, um, but this is, yeah, this is the random, oh, look at that. I like, sorry. I'm just looking at the other colorways that, that she has on her, but yeah. yeah. So Elizabeth Finn is a, a local, local, local yarn shop owner. Yeah. I did. I didn't wreck. I know who Elizabeth is, but mm -hmm. I didn't know her last name was Finn. Yeah. Or that may be her, her professional name, but yeah. So really, really fun. Um, Again, I sort of missed this year's, but I might do next year's. So I really, I what I like about kind of this project thing is like I would have never picked out to do this and would not picked up these colors, and I'm really really happy with it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so instead of grafting it together, I just sewed it together because I'm lazy. Oh, and they did one. She did one that's like stripes instead yeah. of stranded color. Stranded color. Work. Yeah. So, so that, yeah. Yeah. So which is just a little bit, you know, less um, little little easier. So. But yeah, well, and the uh, Progressive East End Project, the Peep, mm -hmm. has a has a Ravelry page. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, cool. All right. Um, speaking of which, um, the um, oh, Sneak a Peek was one from was one of the pat was was not this year's patterns, but I think the pat the pattern for their for last year, mm -hmm. and that's Amy Pelletier, which mm -hmm. is the owner of. Um, the one in Stillwater. Darn it anyway. Darn it anyway, yeah. yeah. I think that's her, who that yeah. is. Um, so, yeah, so speaking of which, we've got the Yarn Shop Hop coming up in April, and yep. I'm, ho I'm hoping that we can do it this year, and I'd yeah. like to try to do it where we go to all the shops. Because yeah, there's some new ones. There's some new ones, yeah. Yeah, there's a new, I don't know if the new shop, there's a new shop in... Minneapolis called Dandelion Fiber Arts. Yes, I think I think that's the name. Um, I'm, I'm almost 100. Yeah, sure. it's yeah. Um, and literally, I think we just found it by googling one day. <laughs> no, um, we drove by it. Oh, that's right. Our, it's right near where our um, Dandelion Fiber Company. Yep, yep, that sounds right. Yeah, it's at 39th and Lindale right. in Minneapolis. Right, which is a perfect place for a yarn shop. I'm surprised there wasn't there one up there already. Okay, I'm already freaking out because they have amazing leather it looks like leather case for D for dpns and stuff yes oh my gosh okay we haven't been there yet no um so oh my gosh i'm freaking out now okay because I, I i i've always wanted a better way to store my dpns mm -hmm. um and it looks like they've got a lot of options here. If anybody knows of any, like, really good pouches, whatever, um, that are do a great job of storing DPNs, let me know. Okay, 
So now I get to go, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, so I knit a hat for my friend Gio. Um, and this is this is it. It's it turned out great. Gio picked the colors, or I picked the main color, and he picked the background color. I gave him a few options, and he picked um, the pattern, right? Yes, that's right. He picked the pattern because we knit it. I knit it from the Knitting the National Parks um, book by Nancy Bates, and what she's done here is that the each of the patterns is designed by or um inspired by there's 63 hat patterns and they're inspired by the national parks and so he chose yeah and i don't think i'm no i'm not giving anything away she chose the badlands pattern which is in north dakota um he wanted to do a um he wanted me to knit one that he had been to to mm -hmm. inspired by a um, park that he had been to. So it turned out really great. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. I, I just want to say that I think the colors are awesome. It's really close to like what she picked for the colors mm -hmm. and the pattern. And I just love, I just, I think this little sort of traveling, um, was that done through like, um, cables or is it done by like slipping, switching? It's done by slipping i forget what the technique is it's like is. You're, you're crossing oh it's a like crossover yeah, almost yeah and it's it's i mean it's basically a way you could do cables mm -hmm. but it's and i can't it's been so long now mm -hmm. since i finished it that i can't remember the technique but um it was a technique that basically allowed you to switch i'm gonna do this my favorite thing which is the inside of a color work hat which i love okay here's the problem I, oh, and you did the you did the folded brim too. Oh yeah, so that's another thing that I like to do with all my hats is I knit. So let's say this is I don't know two inches brim. Mm -hmm. I like to knit double that, then fold it over and pick up. Do you provisional cast on for that? Mm -mm. Okay. No, now these days what I do is I just. Um, literally fold it over mm -hmm. and just pick the two up and start the next gotcha. row by yeah. each stitch and it just I, I like it better than provisional cast on or whatever so it 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 doubles the thickness of the brim to for your ears um and i like the way that it looks here's the problem i did not i struggle with color work when it comes to the fabric not being tight mm -hmm. and i did not go up a needle size for this for the i mean the whole hat is color work right. almost and so when you put it on it's like i can't get it past here and i have no idea what this looks like right now it looks but it's like a like, hat <laughs> it's like i think it's this is so tight and not stretchy mm -hmm. that i can't get it past there so on one hand so so i guess what i'm wondering is is there a way to block this such that i could stretch it out or something so that it would fit like aggressively block it or something mm -hmm. or would that end up making the whole hat look weird because we thought about doing it on a balloon yeah so but i'm just like is it gonna make the whole hat too big well but i think if you do a and okay. I get, okay, so I guess, okay, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in what people's thoughts are, like yeah. how they would handle this situation. Right. Worst case scenario, we aggressively block it, either with pins or with a mm -hmm. balloon or something like that. And then if it doesn't work, I'll just knit it again. Yeah. It was fun. Um, poor Gio waited all winter, and he kept saying, is my hat done? Is my hat done? In a, in a nice way, because I think he had a cl um, classmate that was a knitter, and he wanted to show mm -hmm. his, his classmate the hat. But I just never finished it, and um, I, I mean, I finished it, but then I'm like, well, I got discouraged and disappointed mm -hmm. and got angry because right. it's not stretchy at all, and you can't get it on your head. So... Anyway, more to come on that, but I'd be interested to know what people's thoughts are. Yeah. The yarn, um, I don't have the notes um, available to me for what the yarn is. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen, or I will have put it at the bottom of the screen. I can't get to my um, 
notes at the moment to see that. So, okay. um, yeah, so that's that. That's what the yarn is. It was a, well, let me look at the pattern. It called for U.S. size 5 needles, um, worsted yarn, and the, it's got a chart in the book. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Oh, it's a right-leaning crossover. And uh, a left right-leaning and a left-leaning crossover. Right. That's right. So. Which I thought was really fun, because, like, I don't think you've really done that before, and, like, just figuring out the new technique and how to make it work, I think you did a really good job on that. Just thank you. Just like every thing that's got a new technique in it i knit it i started it knitted it and then ripped it all out and then <laughs> started again every project where i've got a new technique it's just like i know i'm gonna do that because mm -hmm. it's like i struggle 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 then i figure it out and then i rip it all out <laughs> start over so all right that's that great all right i will pull up my hat really quick so this was just um a hat that i knit um just because i liked the yarn so this was a um ball of yarn and <sighs> I don't know where the ba band is. Is it um, not on the inside? No, no, I don't do that. Um, but oh, it was a. Um, it's a graduate. Gra is that what it's called? Where it starts with gradient, the gradient, gradient, yarn. gradient yarn. Um, I don't remember it's by. I'll model it. Yes, um, but the colorway is called Mount Doom. So the idea is, here's the bottom of the mountain, goes on up to the top. So, um, and the pattern I used was Enchanted Evening Cap Pattern by Amy Oschenfeld of Happy Little Yarn. Um, I just wanted a really pretty simple um, hat pattern to follow. Um, I kind of did what Scott does um, where, <laughs> sorry, where I did the, did the double layer of the brim um, and folded it up. Oh, you, you know what? I really like that. You did it where... See, I always do a two-by-two. Two, regardless of what the mm -hmm. pattern calls for, I do a two-by-two two rib mm -hmm. double thickness. But I kind of like the look of that where mm -hmm. it's just... The one-by-one. Stockinette. Yeah. That's just... That's one-by-one one rib. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Oh, or is it? Yeah, that's ribbed. That's one-by-one one rib. Oh. No, it's not. Is it? I don't think it is. I can't tell. Maybe it's not. No, I think I think you're right. I think I think it's just I think it's just it's just regular stockinette. Yeah, yeah regular stockinette. Because the hat's regular stockinette. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I really like how it sort of goes up from this. <laughs> sorry, like sort of the deep purple ish at the bottom, and then it goes up to this um, orange, and then so what I wanted to do was do the top in kind of the red. That's Mountain Doom. Here's the bottom. You go on up, here's the lava, and here's that, and the one ring place is somewhere inside Scott's head. Mm -hmm. um, and so, made up this is Lord of the Rings, if nobody knows what he's talking about. Mountain Doom is in Lord of the Rings. Sorry. Um, I can't wait for you to watch that for Best Picture winner. Mm. Um, it's going to be a nine hour podcast because you're going to have so much to say about it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so, anyway. Um, what was fun, though, is for my birthday last year, or was it Christmas? I can't remember. Betty Ann got us some pom-pom makers. Oh, that's right. Then. Yeah. And so this little pom-pom, which I think turned out really, really well. I always struggle with pom-poms getting the right, like, poofiness or something, um, and the right size and all that stuff. So thank you, Betty Ann. This worked out really, really well. I wear this hat all the time. This is kind of my, like, go out to the grocery store hat. I really like it. Um, I love the yarn. You also did this. Oh, yeah. So I also, for to attach the um, pom-pom, I used a button and um, didn't weave it or tie it on. I used, like, a knot that you can undo. So if I need to wash it, wash it, wash it, wash it, um, I can just take the pom-pom off and do that. So I... I think we always talk. It's a nice hat pattern. It really is. Um, and it's basic and nice. It's basic and nice. I like that the decreases are cool. <laughs> I I don't know. Like sometimes you get a hat and the decreases are like super. Like this is the decrease, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's subtle, and um, yeah. I mean, I just really like the pattern. Thank you, Annie. No, Amy. I'm sorry. Ugh, need my cheaters. Amy Oshenfeld, In case I said that incorrectly earlier. Um, 
yeah, really nice pattern. And again, it was just really, I wanted a, a pattern that you could just show off the yarn. Mm -hmm. And I really think that d did the trick. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank cool. you. Thank you, Amy. And thank you, Betty Ann, for the pom-pom maker. You're the best. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to do a pair of socks now that I finished. So this was um, the, sorry, let me try that again. This is the, the knit, sorry, the sock pattern that I always follow, which the, the base of it is the Rose City Rollers. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Rose City Rollers. Um, there's a game I play called Rose City Rollers too. Anyway, um, sorry, Rose City Rollers, but I, I modify it a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, and so this time what I did was, and I don't, I won't do it again, but this time what I did was I did the two by two rivet and then I put like five rows of pearl to separate the leg of the sock from the ribbing. And I don't really like, it didn't, it, I don't know. It didn't just, spark joy. It didn't spark joy. What did so, spark joy? I just like the, I like the gradient. Oh yeah. So what I knit this from was a, um, sorry, I'm thinking I, I, I knit this from a sock blank. And it was, I'm pretty sure it was a sock blank from Yarn? Jesse from Die Monkey Yarns. Um, and so I, I'm pretty sure it was hers. And so what I did was I, so it went from this color and then it ended with that color, the sock blank did. And it was a gradient from there. So what I did was I started one end with, and I think this is where it started, but I went one end and then knit as far as, or actually I, I did a top down. So I knit from... Well, now I'm confused. No, so basically... No, I did... I'm sorry. Let me try that again. I, I, okay. That's not what I did. This is what happens when we go back in time. <laughs> yes. This is the archaeology of it. Okay, let me try that again. So this is what happened. This is what happened What, what was. happened was... Okay. <laughs> so I started here, at the beginning of the sock blank, and then I knit, 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 and then I kept going. Right. And then it faded to the red. There we That's what I did. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, the Rose City Rollers pattern um, and the sock blank, I'm pretty sure, was Die Monkey Yarns. Mm -hmm. um, but I just like I just like them. They're cool. They're for me. Um, and they match without being matchy-matchy. Right. So. And they're, um, they're 64 stitches, 2.5 millimeter. Mm -hmm. And I use 9-inch circulars. And then I switch to... DPNs for the, and these DPNs, in fact, for the, which are like the rainbow nitpicks. Nitpicks, yeah. yeah. So um, I switch to those when it's time to do decreases and stuff. Oh no, our puppy dog is having a dream. Yeah. If the so, mic got that little, little <laughs> sniffle. Mar Mara Catherine Briner. So that's uh, the Rose City Rollers pattern and socks for me. All right. Okay, now it's your turn. Awesome. So this is one I think I was working on. I don't remember. I was working on it last time we did it, or I'd just gotten the yarn for it. So our friend Caleb did a de-stash, and he had, like, a huge amount of um, quarry from Brooklyn Tweed. Um, so I bought, I cleaned him out of his quarry. Um, and I was like, you know what? I want to make a sweater that was designed for this yarn. And so what I did was, it was called Spearheads by Jared Flood. So here's what it looks like. Bum, ba -da -bum. Um, and what was interesting about it is at the time that I was trying to find the matching color, um, there was some issue where they were changing mills or something like that, so they weren't weren't making quarry anymore. You were looking for the contrast color. Yes, looking for the contrast color. You had color. the gray, you yeah. didn't have the dark. Yeah. And so what I first did was I went out and I got this, which is from um, Blue Sky Fibers, and I just decided I didn't like the way the it's color too subtle it's too subtle it wasn't and um but it's a beautiful beautiful color i'll do something with it. i got got like three skeins of it but i did some swatches on it i think i was on the swatches when i we last once we last talked um and so i was like eh, eh. and then in the meanwhile quarry got reestablished, 
And I found this at the Yarnery, um, which is called Cast Iron. In St. Paul, Minnesota. In St. Paul, Minnesota. So um, Quarry is um, chunky weight um, made with wool, <laughs> American wool. It's a um, non-treated wool, so it's really nice and, I don't know. This is cast iron. Cast iron, and this is granite. Oh, and it's woolen spun. Woolen That's spun. That's another thing yeah. about it. Yeah. And this is granite. Um, so, yeah. Targi Columbia wool. Oh, perfect. It's like they tell you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, finished this sweater. It was my first, um, second yoke sweater. Um, and, yeah, really, really happy the way it turned out. Um, it was a pretty quick knit, and I did... Um, Provisional, not provisional, tubular cast-ons for the um, sleeves and the bottom. Was that cast-ons or cast-offs? Cast-ons, because it's a bottom-up sweater. So so the sleeve was, you started the sleeve here? Mm-hmm. Okay. With a tubular cast-on. Um, so yeah, I really like how it works, how it looks. So let's talk for just a minute. Sure. I, I want to get people's feedback on this. The mm -hmm. one thing you don't like about this sweater, and you've had this problem with other sweaters. Mm -hmm. I The only reason I haven't had this problem with sweaters is because I've knit like one sweater. Right. Is that the the neck hole ends up being too large. Yeah, it ends up being like a boat neck. Yeah. Almost. And so I remember Justin, mm -hmm. Caleb's husband Justin talking about that with yoked sweaters and he he's experienced enough and knowledgeable yeah. enough to adjust and whatever but like how so what i've I done think what he's done before is he goes down like a whole bunch when he gets to the yeah, yoke, and he I, goes down a whole bunch of needles and sizes. i did that i think oh. um i think what i should have done was do this i should have done another inch of yeah of um neck and would you continue to do decreases? No, because I think it, will, it would just go in. It would just be more. There'd be an extra little bit more of the neck. Yeah, but it's. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about necessarily, but yeah. like it's that's not going to decrease the whole size. That's just going to make it go up. Yeah, but I think that I think even having it go up a little bit would make it sit a little higher on the neck. Yeah. So. But I think though that it would be worth like doing some decreases. Yeah. Maybe on either side of this part, mm -hmm. so that it cinches up a bit. I don't yeah. know. That's that's. I would be interested if anybody has any recommendations, or if anybody knows of like a pattern or a or a book, yeah, or a podcast or something where people talk about that problem and address it. So, oh, I should. I actually got a book that I think talks about it. Oh, that's right. That's but right. we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, and it's more like I think for it looks like. When I look at the pictures, this is how it's supposed to be, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just a little bit of a wider um, opening in the neck, which I just, I don't I don't know why. It just doesn't, I don't love that I keep fiddling with it and stuff like that. I think the other thing, too, is that you tend to wear button-down shirts, collared shirts mm -hmm. underneath this sweater and maybe yeah. other sweaters. And maybe if you wore, like a t-shirt or a tank top or something underneath right. it right it wouldn't bother you so much maybe because what ha ends up happening is you've got the collar and then it shows like well and the collar gets all weird and bunchy yeah. and stuff like that but anyway I, i've worn it i to my credit i've worn it a couple of times and, and i do like the look of it um so yeah i mean i think it's a really the nice thing about it is because it's this chunky yarn it was a really fast knit um, it's a really pretty knit and it's a very good pattern. So, um, I like it a lot. Very cool. So, um, all right. So I'm going to now talk about my, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to spend just a second on my, um, other finished object, my last okay. finished object. So hang on. my last finished objects, finished object, I'll put a picture in. Um, it was a baby blank that I made for our friends. Dane and Emily, who live two doors down, and their new baby daughter, Delphina. So cute. We just hung out with her the other night. Yeah, she's she's very cute. Um, and so what I did was I used the Stitch in Time blanket by Kay Jones from the Bakery Bears. 
And it was a pattern that Betty Ann had bought me um, recently in the last year. And what Kay Jones does is it's a, it's a blanket that allows you to use up bits and pieces of your fingering weight yarn. And so you end up making squares out of nine mitered squares in different colors and then there's a like a border around mm -hmm. the nine square blocks and then you piece it all together what i did was i bought a whole bunch of different colors of this i would say chunky or bulky yeah baby, baby blanket. blanket yarn yeah um different pastels and then i did instead of a nine block square i did a or a nine square block i did a four square block mm -hmm. and then did a pattern around that and pieced it all together. It turned out really great, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. So I will I will have put a picture in there. So I love that pattern, and I love making mitered squares. Um, oh. So anyway, it's I've mm, I've done probably the because what what she, I think what she does and what a lot of people do is you just kind of knit on it as time goes on. Mm -hmm. Because it's to make a blanket out of fingering weight yarn is very time consuming. Did you use fingering weight yarn? You used chunky, right? On the baby blanket, yes. Right, but yes. I'm also knitting okay. a stitch in time blanket with leftover pieces of my mm -hmm. sock yarn. Gotcha. But I haven't. I can show that maybe next time because mm -hmm. um, I don't really know where it is at the moment. But. Yeah, so anyway, that was that one, and it was great. great. So those are all my finished objects. I um, have three works in progress. I have one and a half. Okay. So do you, I'll go first? Yeah. Okay, I'm knitting a pair of socks for my friend Tracy. I guess this is a half-finished object. Um, and so I just was like, I want to knit, I love knitting socks. And I was like, I wonder if Tracy would like a pair of socks because I've never knit Tracy anything. And so this is the, this is the, the finished sock. Mm -hmm. It is the, again, Rose City Rollers pattern that I always do. And it um, is two yarns that were not purchased together. Um, I just, I just went through all of our yarn and and pick these two mm -hmm. i believe that i knit oh i know what this was from this was yarn from the peep project from three four years ago with the uh, river nope no it's, oh no it's the yarn from the shawl that i made for betty ann it's the red the white, red white, red yeah green and blue or whatever yeah, yeah, it is yeah, yeah. that's right that's yeah. right you're right so anyway that was the heels and toes, and then I, I but I don't remember who makes that yarn. Yeah, this yarn is the blue is from Viking Fiber Co., mm -hmm. which is a Colorado dyer. This is the Homestead Fingering Base, which is 100% merino. Mm -hmm. um, Manis Glow mm -hmm. is the. F um, colorway mm -hmm. and so yeah you see that really quick mm -hmm. so i'm not sure if that's where we got this so we'll, we can i do a little tangent really quick absolutely so um last august um i was in colorado visiting my mom and we went to a yarn shop in centennial colorado called colorful color colorful yarns and um, the dyer, the the guy who does Viking Fiber Co. Co. Um, this is like his local yarn shop, and he had a lot of yarn there. So I don't know if I bought. He doesn't own it, but he he sells a lot of his right yarn there. because he's he's he lives nearby and is friends with the owner. So I don't know if I bought this. If this is something I bought then, um, I had a whole bag of stuff I bought from that store, which it was a great store. If you're ever in. Yeah, the, the Denver area. Denver area. It's kind of in the um, near south suburbs, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Um, great store. Great um, great place. They had a lot of his stuff. There was a whole bag of stuff that I bought there, but that is also lost to time in archaeology. 
since it's been about a year. It's been blended into our stash. But um, I wanted to give a shout out because while I was there with my mom, um, this woman, Kathy, I actually wrote her name in my <laughs> phone note so I wouldn't forget, um, came and said hi and recognized us, uh, um, which is really, really cool. And I'm like, oh yeah, totally. We're going to do a podcast like in the next couple of weeks and I'll make sure I mention you. So um, it's... <laughs> I, I hope that was last August. I, that was last August. So um, I just want to say shout out to Kathy for seeing, being so nice and recognizing us. And um, yeah, it's a great yarn shop, and um, I really like his yarn a lot. Yeah, he does really cool colors. Um, I think I got a so this is a great. This is great. This yarn sh really shows off stitch definition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and it's yeah, I love the color, mm -hmm. and it, it worked really well with this. Contrast. I don't. I don't think I, we might have gotten this. I would never buy sock. I don't buy sock yarn usually, so maybe we got this here. But I got some other stuff by him while I was there. Okay. Um, so this is um, this is the where I'm at with the other with the second sock. Mm -hmm. So I've um, uh, yeah, I've got that much of the second sock. So yeah, I really. I'm just excited how well these two colors go together for mm -hmm. colors that were not designed to go together i really i think it's a really well, nice contrast and i feel good about the fact that i went into our bin of yarn that's mostly used up mm -hmm. and found that contrasting heels right and the, toes color yeah. and, and i'm using it because when i get done well i guess there'll be enough for like maybe some some squares in the mm -hmm. stitch and time blanket but i mean i'm using up yeah a good amount so yeah and we're also in process of well, I guess we can talk a little about that more when we talk about yeah. other stuff. Yeah. Um, all right. So my first work in progress is one. This is the project that will live on forever. I will probably be knitting it when they haul me off to the nursing home or whatever. Um, this is the Thorn um, sweater by, I think it's Jonathan Bennett? No. No. Martin Story. Martin Story. Jonathan Bennett is... The guy from Bridgerton, right? Guy, no. Jonathan, isn't it Jonathan Bennett, the guy from Mean Girls? <laughs> oh, I think he is. Um, this is Martin Story. Um, it's called Thorn. Yeah, that's the guy from... It's a colorwork sweater. Um, so what I have done right now is um, I have a, the main... <sighs> it's so... It's been, I've been working on this for so long. So what I have done is the back panel one of the side panels because it's a it's a you might have said this already but it's a it's a piece together um cardigan cardigan and then part of one more side panel and then i've got the sleeves and put it all together so why does this have this piece here like that so yeah. what this little piece right here will be will eventually this is the um oh the button band the button band which you what happens is you make all the pieces, you sew it together, and then you do the button band and attach it as you do it. Mm. Um, which I don't necessarily, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I, I feel like it would have been easier just to do this intarsia going up. Um, the pattern wants you to do the button band separately and then sew it. Mm. But I'm just going to do it and then just attach it to the side when I do it. But... um. So I've been working on this this project for a long time. Um, it's just a you know it's pretty complicated color work and it takes attention. And when I'm in a healthy place about this blanket, this sweater, um, I'll get up in the morning before work and do like two rows before and two rows after. And you can get a lot done, but um, when I'm feeling like like I can't possibly do it anymore, especially because like I feel. I was making good prog progress and then just sort of stalled out for a little bit. But it's nice to have it. I really, really like how it looks. I love the color work pattern. Yeah. At some point it's be done, it's gonna be epic. Um, I keep making up occasions where I'm gonna finish it and wear it and they keep passing me by. Mm -hmm. But uh, this Christmas mm -hmm. or something. So that is my, um, my perpetual work in progress. But I think last time I showed it, I was like only this far done with it. So, yeah. you know, this and this is eight months worth of work. <laughs> so, when you're along, doing other stuff too. Yeah, exactly. So, cool. All but right. yeah, I remember I I took I took this to Italy with us, 
and it had been in progress for a long time. So it's um, predated the pandemic and <laughs> all that good stuff. Well, speaking of sweaters that go on forever, I, um, in my beautiful Walmart <laughs> project bag, um, this is a sweater that John and I John and I started on together, and John finished it, and I have not. Um, this is the um, Evolo by Drop the sweater by Drops design. It's a yoked sweater, and it is. Um, or a round yoke sweater, and it... I'm going to do it as a turtleneck. Mm -hmm. um, John, you did not do it as yeah. a turtleneck. Well, and for this one, I got the, the collar right. So I don't know what I did with this one. I should just do that. Oh. Yeah, because it's, it's a yoke sweater, and I really like... <laughs> what I don't like about the one I made is it's too long. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to try to fix that, but go on. So... This is one that, because of the fact that I'm so nervous about knitting sweaters and, like, all the work that you put into it and potentially the money, um, I, before I spend any time or, or the money knitting sweaters with higher-end wool, um, I'm knitting this one with acrylic. Um, and I did my... The only sweater that I finished... I did an acrylic as well. It was like an acrylic wool blend. Mm -hmm. But that just makes me feel a little less panicky about wasting yarn and stuff like that. So this is all Red Heart Super Saver that we got at Joann's, literally. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is... I've shown this before on the podcast, but this is where I'm at. I'm casting off for the... Or no, no, I didn't cast off. That's just where the stitches fell off. Um... The nice thing about this stuff is it doesn't slip down. No, it doesn't. I thought you finished a sleeve, though, didn't I did. You? I'm going to okay. show that. Okay. So, anyway, this is where the some stitches got pulled off by our... Cat or lovey, dog. Lovey dog right there. He's taking a nap. Aww. Um, anyway, so I'll put those back on. But acrylic, it's really easy to pick those up. And uh, It's a little small for me, I'll be honest. Um, it might have been the right size at the time, but I've gained a little weight. <laughs> so I'm either, either right or got to lose that weight or... Um, I don't know, maybe I can stretch it out or something mm -hmm. like that. But um, So right now it's just white stockinette. Okay. Um, and then... I was going to pull the bag out of the way, Sue. So. Oh, yeah. So we okay. can see a little better. So then the color... So then it, for the color work, for the yoke and stuff, I've got... So this is the color. I'm doing a, a navy blue and a turquoise mm -hmm. blue. I really love turquoise. those two colors together. Yeah. So this is the this is this one sweater. It's got dog hair all over it. That's lovely. What? Um, so this is the what the, the sleeve looks like. And so the, the it's kind of a an elaborate yoke mm -hmm. um, with like kind of a knots and crosses motif from what I can tell from looking at it. But anyway, I mean, I really, I enjoy it, but I, so I did the sleeve and then I started this and I think because I'm, didn't you do, do you both sleeves? Oh, I did do both Yeah. Sleeves. So that's like you are, right. you're almost, basically you're that's almost right. done. And that's, I keep forgetting that. That's the fun thing about doing like bottom up sweaters. You do the sleeves first and then you do all this stuff and then you get to the fun part, which is the yoke. That's so you're almost right. the fun part. That's right. Okay. I mean, not that it's not all fun. Yeah. But... So I had done all this. Yeah. And then I started on this and was making good progress on this. I stopped to try it on and see kind of where it fell on me because I mm. didn't I didn't want to have happened to me what happened to you, which right. was it. I've got it a little was... dress sweater. <laughs> yes, sweater a dress. A little sweater dress. Um, but then I had it in my bag and the dog like sat on the bag or something like that and it pulled. And I should, I mean, I've got, we've got a thousand of those things that you put on your needle so that yeah. stitches won't fall off, but I always forget about it. Yeah. So all these stitches fell off and then I was like, oh God, I don't want to deal with that. Right. You just need a moment, you need like, an, like 45 minutes with a, with a documentary about Colts and you'll be fine. Exactly. So um, uh, maybe I'll do that today. Yeah. So um, anyway, that's that. And um, yeah, it's Red Heart Super Saver Yarn and mm -hmm. I, maybe it'll motivate me to lose the 20 pounds I want to lose. <laughs> so, okay. All right. That's that. So you've got one I've more. Got one I've got more work okay. in progress. So this is my... Next work in progress. Um, so this is um, a, it's going to be a sweater vest. Um, it is 
called Alberta. Um, it's another Brooklyn tweed pattern, which apparently I'm really liking these days. Look at that doll. By um, Jared Flood. Um, so the yarn I'm using um, is... It is... Oh, Lucky Irish Tweed. I'm sorry, that was offensive. Um, <laughs> it's Lucky Tweed um, for St. Patrick's Day um, by Kelburn Woolens, and the colorway is Tomato, or Tomato. Um... It does a, it's got a shamrock on it, a horseshoe. I feel like it's very appropriate for St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had purchased this yarn to make a different sweater vest. It was a pattern. It was a, um, what would you call a sweater vest that you button in the middle? A button-down sweater vest? Yeah, I guess. Sure. Um, a button-up sweater vest? Yeah, a button-up sweater vest. Um, oh, it was it like, is made in Ireland. Yeah. Um, it was called like a vest for Charles and it was from this designer who did all these Jane Austen inspired knits. Um, I started it, got about maybe six inches and I had gauged incorrectly and it was the size of a baby blanket. Like <laughs> it was, it was like, it would have been a, you know, a caftan if I'd actually gotten done making it. So, but I really liked the color and I really wanted to make a vest out of it. And so luckily I, I think I have enough yarn to make, make this. So... The way this thing works, um, and then did the tubular cast on for the bottom, which I, I just, the tubular cast on, it is a lot more work, but I love how it looks. Oh, oh, S pause that thought. So okay. speaking of that, one of the things that I was worried about with the socks, because they're for Tracy, I know her so foot size or her shoe size, mm -hmm. but I don't, you know, you never know, um, how, how things are going to fit on people's feet. So... I wanted to make the cast on mm -hmm. stretchy mm -hmm. because that, that can be a, a Bear, bottleneck, yeah. so to speak. And so I almost a hundred percent of the time do the long tail, cast long on. tail cast on. Well, I tried, I think it's called the knitted cast on where you knit a stitch and then you go around and add it to the needle and mm. you knit a stitch you, you well you do like you're knitting a mm -hmm. stitch you go yeah. in knit wise and, yeah. you, and then you wrap it around and put it on the needle mm -hmm. i cannot believe how stretchy that cast mm -hmm. on is and it's so i'm going to be doing that for like everything yeah. unless i do tubular yeah. um it takes a lot longer but it's kind of a fun it's a fun technique mm -hmm. and the the long tail cast well, on the edge looks really nice yeah because i feel like the long tail cast on sometimes you get a your your edge looks very um Defines not the right word, but it's got like a, a pretty distinct line or something. Yeah. I don't know. I think this one is. Yeah, it definitely has a line where this yeah. one doesn't have a line. It looks like yeah. it's it's more closer to the tubular. Mm -hmm. So anyway, go ahead. Sorry. So anyway, um, I love this yarn. It is so gorgeous to knit with. I'm I'm so excited about this. Um, what I'm excited about or scared about is the way this this pattern works is. Instead of doing armholes and neck holes. There's a ton of little, there's a ton of little armhole. <laughs> anyway, it's for little people. Um, little, little ton of arms. Um, what you do instead is you do an armhole. Um, you we cut. Uh, what a you starter? Do? No. You, you. Oh, God. You put stitches on waist yarn. <laughs> And like then, a provisional cast on? No, it's a, it's oh. not a cast on. So it's, you drop the stitches. No, I you... didn't. No, no, they're they're on waist yarn. Well, that's what I mean. Is like you you put them drop on waist them yarn, off, yeah. and then you cast on like five stitches, some stitches on top of it, and then eventually you steek. Oh, that's right. I remember you you were yeah. gonna do a sweater that you steak. so like it. You have a little this little area eventually right the here panel. will be the will be the steek panel, steek panel. I've never steeked in my life. I'm a little afraid of it. But I'm going to have um, our friends, Matt and Jeffrey, are quilters, so I'm going to make them sew. Because you can... So, with that, mm -hmm. and maybe you don't know yet, yeah. but I'm assuming you have to use a color of yarn that matches the... Or a color of thread? No, no not really, because what happens is you'll steek this, and it'll these will sort of fall off. But you you sew it first, right? No. Oh, okay. Because and then what I'll do is I'll then I'll pick up the stitches and make a rib. No, but I mean, when do you when do you have them sew it? Oh, before we cut it. Okay, so then, 
But what I'm saying is, wouldn't you need to have them use the like a, same uh, color yeah, yar, thread? Yeah, yeah. you okay. would do that. So I, I don't know. I've never, I've, I've never steeped anything in my life, so I'm a little afraid of it. But I think it'll be fine. Um, so yeah, and then you do the same thing for the neck. So the nice thing about that is, so one of the advantages of about steeking is you don't have to do. You can just knit the whole thing in the round. Right, 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 right. So if this were a normal sweater vest, I would have to be doing back and forth and having like sort of two panels. Cause like the last sweater vest oh, so I did. So that's right. It's it's in the round up to the armholes and then it's back knit and flat. Kn and then you join the tops. Yeah. So this lets you do that and then you steak it and then you... Um, and then you do a rib. Do the rib. So... Um, or like a little yeah, sleeve. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really excited. Or no, I guess it yeah, wouldn't, you wouldn't need it'd be to a rip. So it's like a V-neck sweater with little suit. So I'm excited about this. I think it's gonna work out. Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, it is quite lovely. I'm I'm excited about it. I was I was excited to get to the part where we're doing the steak panels, even though again, steaking scares me. Um, but I've never done it, so we'll just see how it goes. All right. And I've I've heard. If you sew it, it's not hard. Yeah. Because there's a... Yeah. So, anyway. That, is, there, is there sticking instructions in there? There are... Well, there's sort of I'm sticking... sure that, like, um, somebody like uh, Very Pink Knits has some... Oh, yeah. No, there's, there's there's a million sticking tutorials yeah. out there. So... Um, All right. So, my last work in progress. This is something that's gone on for a long, long, long time. Oh, look. There's that hat. Which one? <laughs> I like Nakoma's hat. Oh, <laughs> It it's, was in that bag for some reason. Well, I think, who knows? Okay, so, um, for a long time, let me try that again. I started this, it's a hat, it's a sock head slouch hat, and I started it a long time ago, and it's with slub, slub yarn, mm -hmm. slub yarn? Slub yarn. Slut yarn? No. Slub yarn. Slub yarn. Um, and it's called, like, cowboy or denim it's not it's not um tri trilogy yarns cowboy sexy cowboy or whatever it's um like i don't know i i didn't save the thing so what's my point of this what's the point Hold of the story on. so oh so john and i play every week we have since the pandemic we have pl been playing pathfinder with a group of friends in our neighborhood. And Pathfinder, for those of you that don't know, is an offshoot of Dungeons and Dragons. So there will be periods of time where it's a it's a very conversational game. Mm -hmm. And also um, sometimes there's it's it's a so when you're when you're just playing the game and it's kind of like a storytelling game and if you're kind of not really an active part of that part of the story, there's opportunity to sit in it. Mm -hmm. The other thing is when there is the battle part of it, um, and you're fighting monsters or whatever, it's it goes. It's a, a it's it's like a regular game mm -hmm. where a board game where you have you take turns mm -hmm. in a round, and so depending on and each round can be rather complicated, and so depending on how many people are playing, mm -hmm. it can be a while while you're waiting for it to be your turn. And so I cannot sit still. I cannot sit still and just exist i have to be doing something and so if i'm not careful i'll end up like reading the news on my laptop or i'll like do my email or whatever and then you're not paying attention to the game mm -hmm. this when i'm knitting i can be doing like present basically. i can be present that's, yeah. that's a good way to say it so i'm doing the decreases the problem is that i really the best thing to knit while you're doing Pathfinder, something you have to think about, and so... You I don't think about. That's what I meant. Okay. Something you don't have to think about. And I... This, when you're... Now that I'm doing the decreases, what I should have done is had stitch markers, mm -hmm. and then just... That stitch marker would tell me it's time to do a de mm -hmm. decrease, but... It didn't have stitch markers with me when I started the decreases, and mm -hmm. I didn't want to wait. Mm -hmm. So I started the decreases. I think I'm, like, way off with the decreases, but it's really this yarn. With, with, and, and with the sock head, it doesn't matter it's as not much, gonna right? Matter. Yeah. So I just need to put stitch markers on uh, before tomorrow yeah. when we play, because last week... I didn't couldn't knit didn't mm -hmm. have anything to knit and I was I was going insane. Yeah, I really there. this yarn is so cool. 
I like it the is. I like the colors and I like the. Um, it's got little blips on it, yeah. little fuzzy blips, like almost like it came on. Yeah, undone. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, but I really like it. It's very cool. And I don't. I mean, I'm. I was just. I was just knitting it. I've only knit one other sock head, and I knit it for my friend Nate. And I didn't knit. I knit it. Was knitting it mm. for myself because I had never knit that pattern before. Mm-hmm. And so I was just knitting it. And I love knitting with sock yarn, and I love knitting just yards and yards of stockinette. Yep. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to knit this for myself. Mm-hmm. And then as I was doing it, I was like, this hat is literally my friend Nate. Mm-hmm. Just the color and the yarn yeah. and everything. It was like very much him. So I gave it to him and then I started this one. And I I have no idea if I'm going to keep it for myself mm-hmm. or if I'll give it to somebody else. The goal is not the product. It's the process. It's the process. That's so weird. I don't understand that at all. I know. I know. So, um, so, so literally, I don't know what I'm going to do with this hat. But as mm-hmm. soon as I finish this hat, I'm going to start another socket. Gotcha. Um, I'm always going to be knitting a socket. Well, it's, hat a, it's a great way. I mean, while I'm doing as as you'll Pathfinder. as you'll as we'll we'll discuss in our upcoming segment what is going on with our yarn <laughs> in our house segment. Um, we have a lot of we have a we may have accumulated a bit of a stash over the years, mm. um, and so it's really nice to find projects that you don't have to go out and buy new yarn for. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So that's um, yeah. I've bought so much sock yarn at this point that I, I will be able to knit sock head hats and socks for the rest of my life and never run out of yarn. Yep. So that's my last. Um, Work in progress. Great. Um, I'm going to talk some acquisitions. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Before I forget, the sock head hat pattern, <laughs> sock head slouch hat, um, Kelly McClure mm-hmm. is the designer, and there's a sock head hat, a sock head slouch hat. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, I was just... A sock head cowl. cowl. That's yeah. right. So I'm doing the sock head slouch hat. And I think I made the sock head cowl for a friend of ours once, too. Mm. So, um, okay, acquisitions. Yes. So, we'll do the easy ones first, and the ones with the more complicated story behind it in a second. Okay. So, um, I've got two books. Um, This is the handy book of Top Down Sweaters by Ann Budd. Um, I picked this up because I... Ann Budd. I, I don't know. Um, Has she you, been at a thing you've been at before? I'm not sure. So anyway, um, there is a pattern that um, I, some people I've known have done. It's called It Takes a Village or It Takes a Podcast. I can't remember. It's a cow um, where basically it's a, it's a pretty, pretty um, detailed um, thing, but it, basically it's a cow that's obviously way done or a knit along whatever and it really walks you through everything you need to do to knit a sweater um starting with um picking the yarn gauging measuring and all this good stuff um and it uses this book as kind of the um way to determine your pattern size and gauge so it's actually kind of fun i've never done that before where i've taken usually i work get the pattern and meet gauge, right? And for this one, again, I haven't started it, but I've got the yarn picked up, is you pick out the yarn, find the gauge that you find appealing, and then you make the sweater pattern fit the gauge, which that's how um, What's Her Face does it. And is Andrea Mallory? No, who's the person who does um, fruity knitting? Um. I'm blank, and this is my daughter blank. <laughs> yes, she's wonderful. I she's love wonderful. Her. She's great. Um, but she always she always does that. Pretty knitting podcast. Yeah. yeah, I've always been really impressed by that because I'm like, oh, that's how you should do it. You should find the yarn, find the gauge that looks right, and then adjust the pattern. Um, so apparently, this little cow goes all the way through that and does that. So I got this book. Um, I'm excited about it because it looks like. It's just a way to, um, it sort of walks through how to do top-down knitted sweaters. And so hopefully with this one, you can sort of, and there's several patterns in it too, but like that's the mechanics of measuring and getting gauges. And I've always been a little 
um, intimidated by, so I'm hoping to do that and make a lovely cardigan at some point. So that's fun. Um, great little book. The other one I got is this book. Um, this is a total Instagram thing. Um, this is by Linka Newman. Um, I believe she's Norwegian. Um, Before we go on, uh -huh. I think the why the reason I'm remembering Ann Bud is because I believe that she owns or works at or mm -hmm. teaches classes at River City Yarns, which is I believe mm -hmm. a local yarn shop to the Grocery Girls. Oh, that it's in Canada. Okay, well, I mean clearly, if it's in Canada. No, no, I mean, <laughs> no. yeah, no, it's it's okay. Uh, yeah, that's I. That's where I think yeah, that name is ringing a bell. Bud, Ann Bud is where I remember that name. Sorry, so this is literally I was on Instagram and um, saw one of, I think either she had knitted or someone else had knit one of the, um, I think it was actually this sweater, and I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. So, so I mean it, it's it's half ambition and half yarn pornography. <laughs> so um, yeah, they're Nor they're Norwegian sweaters. I really really like her follow she's got an instagram which is really great um and her stuff is just beautiful i like I the it? yeah it, she has a lot of things where they're yoked patterns and then the color work goes like down all the way and um yeah and so we're also um going to norway this summer so it seemed appropriate too norwegian forest sweater that sounds yeah. up my alley i know so um, yeah, it just really, look at that. That's, that's kind of hard to see, but yeah, yeah, just really, really gorgeous. And she's got some like that have dog shapes in them and stuff like that. They're really, wow, very pretty. Very cool. So yeah. Um, so yeah, she's got, she's got a great Instagram with the patterns, which is how I discovered it. And like, literally I... I saw it. I think someone I follow had did one of her patterns, and I was like, oh my god, that's a fantastic, um, that looked beautiful. And I'm like, I should do that. And then, of course, bought the book. So, yeah. Those are my two book acquisitions. Um, the next one, which is kind of fun. Um, so, last December, Scott and I did a river cruise in Germany. Um, in Central Europe. Central Europe. Germany, Austria, Hungary, with a little stop and brought it in um, Slovakia. Slovakia. It was fabulous. Um, that was where I did a lot of the knit on the knitting on the cowl. Um, so what had happened was um, on the way. So we were, we flew into Munich, which was kind of the first stop on the on the trip, and um, that weekend. That part of Germany saw more snow. It was like a record. It was a record. In Munich. In Munich. And and before we even left yeah. Minneapolis, we were on our way to the airport. And they're like, your flight has been canceled. And we're like, oh dear. And it was, what we didn't realize at the time was it was the flight from Amsterdam to Munich that was canceled. Mm -hmm. Our flight from Minneapolis to Amsterdam was, was just fine. Was fine. Yeah. So like all the snow fell in that part of basically Bavaria, Munich. Um, like the Munich airport was closed down, the trains were closed down, like we were, we couldn't get, you know. And the, the airline from Amsterdam to Munich was KLM, mm -hmm. and the flight from Minneapolis to Amsterdam was Delta, and so we got there to the Minneapolis airport and we're like, our flight's canceled, and the Delta, I mean, it was like the Delta people did, were like not understanding and like, well, it, it was, wasn't their fault, but yeah. it was like... It was just the coordination between KLM and Delta, and yeah, and the guy who the guy who helped us once they figured it out. Yeah, they figured it, it was, out. Was it was great, and so I, I can't just... say anything anything bad about the airlines. Like you obviously can't fly into an airport that it's is closed. closed. Um, so what we did instead is we flew into Amsterdam and did like basically a day layover. So we got in the morning, and then we um, got a hotel outside of the airport and then i don't know if you know people in amsterdam amsterdam has like the most amazing public transportation so we just got like a day 
rail bus pass type thing. We went to Amsterdam and um, walked around in Amsterdam with probably, you know, a crazy amount of jet lag. Ugh. You know, we were yeah, just we were pretty so, tired. We were like in but it was the, still awesome. It was still awesome. We were in the um, art museum and looking at an amazing pictures. I'm like, I'm like, I wish I weren't so tired right now. Yeah, all the Vermeers. And, yeah. Yeah, it was so, amazing. First What's time that in, giant painting that we saw? The Night Watch. The Night Watch. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it was amazing and super cool and our first time in Amsterdam and... Um, it was cold <laughs> and just, and it was really like, it was kind of like we had the city almost to ourselves mm-hmm. because, you know, it was December, which is kind of off season. It was like early morning. So and they had like waffles, yeah, hot it was, waffles with right. chocolate and ice cream. And it was you just... know, we walked the red light district at 1030 in the morning, which is probably <laughs> like, that was hilarious. It was, you know, it did not look like, it just looked like a bunch looked of, like a regular Right. Area town, part of town. So yeah, it was really cool. Um, so what we did do while we were there is, as all good knitters do, went to Stephen and Penelope. Yes. So Stephen, did the Stephen West Stephen West's yarn, um, shop. yarn shop. So with his friend Penelope, which was really really fun. Very cute store. Mm-hmm. Um, Very well organized. Yes. It's not the largest space, but they've got a lot of stuff in there yeah. in a good way, and it's mm-hmm. very well organized. Yeah. So, um, got obviously the bag, um, and then this is the yarn that you bought. Yes, so, yes, I bought Undercover Otter, (laughs) yarn and fibers from Amsterdam. This is, Squirm is the, Squirm Sock is the base, and Songbird is the, um, colorway. It's 80-20, superwash merino Mm -hmm. and nylon, so that was one thing I bought. And then... You didn't buy any yarn. Yes, I did, but it's in a different bag. Oh, okay. And then I bought this. Oh, my God. Which is... Um, why can I not remember anything? It's it's 70% kid mohair, kid mohair and 30% silk. It is made by... Okay, well, I've got my glasses right here. Punk Rock Unicorn. <laughs> um, and it's... Bangkok is the name of the... Mm-hmm. Um, colorway and I bought it because I recently knit a pair of socks for my mom and a pair of socks for my aunt holding kid mohair with sock yarn and I really really enjoyed that Mm -hmm. and I was kind of wishing that I had found I'm probably I assume I'm going to put this with like white or black, Mm -hmm. or something that's monotonal, Mm -hmm. if that's a word, so that it shows off this mohair. Mm -hmm. Maybe a gray. I think a gray, like a light gray would work. A light gray, yeah. Like a sweatshirt gray. Yeah. So anyway, I just, I fell in love with that colorway, and I'm starting to like to knit with uh, mo holding mohair with with, uh, regular yarn. So anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but yeah. And then... Um, hang on just one second. And then I was like, well, I'm going to buy stuff for a pattern. So I bought yarn. So Stephen must have a pattern called um, Rio Clava, which is a baklava. Is that what it's called? Or a balaclava. Balaclava, which is done with brioche. So I got kind of two it's two color brioche so i got two um things of yarn for that the colorway and the, it's done by tandem which is i think it's actually west wool i think it's it's yeah their brand of wool yeah it's tandem brackish moose so yeah brackish and moose are the colors oh, okay um so i started on it um, and then I'm like, you know, I think I need to regage. I was trying to do it on the boat, and um, I guess that we had them wind this in the shop. We must have, because where would have where would because I remember starting this on the. I thought I started this on the boat on the. I don't remember them winding yarn for. Maybe us. I maybe I didn't do it on the boat. I can't remember. Okay. So anyway, um, started this. I'm. It's feeling a little weird. I'm gonna sort of. I think I'm gonna. Start over. Frog it and start it again. So anyway, that's our um, 
acquisitions. I'm sure there have been more in the last eight months. It's but mouse, not moose. I just saw it. Oh, you're right, it's mouse. <laughs> So those are our acquisitions. We've been trying to... Um... It's going to be a nine-hour podcast. I know, it's okay. It's, it's, I mean, we're, it's eight months worth. We're getting caught up. So. Um, so at this point, we're going to transition to the movie reviews. Movie review section of our podcast. And if you have not watched, like I said, if you've not watched No Country for Old Men or I Know Who Killed Me, pause it, watch those movies, and come right back. Right. Um, so I'll start with the best picture winner for, is it 2007? Well, 2007 was the award year. Yeah. So this is the best picture for 2007. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 2007 was when the movies were released. So yeah, it would be the 2007, 2007 Oscars, year. which happened in 2008. Yeah. We have this conversation a lot. Every time. Um, so this is No Country for Old Men. Um, it's a Coen Brothers film. Um, Ethan and Joe Cohen, who are actually from Minnesota, they grew up in St. Louis Park, which is a suburb right a near first us. First ring suburb. First ring suburb right near right near us. Um, so it's kind of go Minnesota pride, yay! Um, and it's based on a Cormac McCarthy book called No Country for Old Men, um, same title, um, and was the Best Picture winner that year. Um, it also won. Um, Best Supporting Actor for Javier Bardem, um, Best Director, um, and the brothers, Coen Brothers won it together, which was the first time you had a co-director winner since Jerome Robbins and Robert Wise for West Side Story in 1961. Thank you, Wikipedia. Um, and then Best Adapted Screenplay. Um, really good movie um the cast is kind of amazing tommy lee jones is in it um javier bardem is in it josh brolin's in it woody harrelson's in it kelly mcdonald's in it stephen roots in it beth grant who we all know from sorted lives mm -hmm. lives is in it <laughs> so it's a really really good cast um really dark movie um as coen brothers often are well there's there's quirky it's quirky but it's violent yeah so um the Javier Bardem character is this kind of bounty hunter who goes around killing people. Um, they did a study where a bunch of psychologists watched all these movies and they agreed that this portrayal was the best portrayal of a psychopath in movies they'd ever seen. Oh, right. Um, which makes it a pretty chilling performance. Um, let's see what else. Um, other interesting things. Oh, so um, he has a really distinctive, like, Dutch boy, page boy haircut, yeah, um, which just makes the character even creepier. So it's 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 kind of like I think it's a little bit like Fargo, except darker. Which which I mean, yeah. Fargo is a very dark film, um, even to the point that they there's both movies involve sort of stolen money, and the case the money is transported in is the same type of case in both movies. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I think the one of the things about the movie that I remember now that it's been eight months ago that we watched it is that the guy that Javier Bardem is chasing, jo the Josh Brolin character, Josh Brolin's character, is running for his life and is sloppy mm -hmm. in his like, and he's just kind of like he's improv. He's making it up as he goes along. He's like someone he stumbles across this money takes it on impulse and so you've got him and he's like freaking out and you know trying to figure out what to do and then you've got javier bardem who's just slowly methodically professionally working toward finding this yep. person and killing them right and it's that's what makes it so panic inducing mm -hmm. and like intense of a movie is because you've got this person who's just it's the it's, it's the, almost like it's like almost the, like a horror film, right? Yeah, it's but it's um the not the fox and the hound, the tortoise and the hare, right? Yeah, <laughs> where the hare is just like you know, and then the tortoise is just slowly, methodically, one foot in front of the other, and it's just. <sighs> and then you have the sheriff who's played by Tommy Lee Jones, who's trying to, who's like piecing it together, trying to prevent more tragedy from happening, and like he's like. 
like two steps behind the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting they're talking about in the movie. There's these th- three main characters: is the Josh Brolin character, the Javier Bardem character, and the Tommy Lee Jones character, and they're almost never on the screen together. Mm. So, um, really good movie. Um, really, really dark. If you don't um, like violence, don't watch the movie. Yeah, if you don't, yeah, and the violence is just really disturbing violence. Mm-hmm. Um, but a really good movie. Um, let's see, it was made on a budget of twenty five million dollars, um, and it made one hundred seventy one dollars mil- worldwide. We one hundred and seventy one dollars million dollars. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think if you haven't seen it and you're interested in, if you like Coen Brothers movies, um, it's definitely worth. See, seeing. I thought it was a western. Before having watched yeah. it, I thought it was a western. Yeah, and it sort of is. Yeah, a mo- like a but it's set in the seventies, right? Yeah, yeah. And so. and I'm trying to remember what does the ti- where does the title come from? It comes from the book. Does Tommy Lee Jones make a statement about that though? Well, it's it's from the Yeats poem "Sailing to Byzantium." Okay, this is no country for old men. Gotcha. Is the opening line to that, and one of the one of the themes is Tommy Lee Jones is a... This is like his last... Yeah, he's a West Texas sheriff, and his he he's like the senselessness of the violence is like, he's like, I need to... This world doesn't make sense to me anymore. Yeah. And this this is kind of the case, or this this is one of the things where he's like, this this world, I don't belong in this world anymore because what's going on is so not understandable. Yeah. So... Cool. All right. Do we want to talk any more about that one, or do we want to switch? I don't think so. I mean, if we if we had done this podcast when we had just seen it, we'd have a lot more talk about. We're mm-hmm. talking about memories and memories at this point. Right. Okay. So then, the Razzie winner for the year of two thousand seven was "I Know Who Killed Me," which was a Lindsay Lohan movie. Mm-hmm. The director was Chris Syverston. Syverston. Um. And it was about a woman who was abducted and tortured and killed by a sadistic... No, so she wasn't killed, sorry. She was abducted and tortured by a serial killer. Right. So... It's a, it's also an upper. Yeah, right. So... Lindsay Lohan's character disappears, and they find her on the side of the road in a ditch. And... She'd been mutilated and all these things. And so once she kind of comes around and starts talking into them, she's like, I'm not whatever the whatever the Lindsay Lohan's character's name was. She's like, that's not I'm not that person. She's like, I'm a I'm a uh, exotic dancer. Right. Um, I think she's she was Aubrey. Sure. And then when they found her and she woke up back up, she said her name was Dakota. Right. And so she had to have her arm and her leg amputated um, because of what had happened to her. Um, and eventually she finds out that she was a twin. And so, and I'm trying to remember, where did Aubrey go during all this so time? So what, what happened was... Because <laughs> I can't remember. So they were twins that were separated at birth, yep. right? And they had this condition where... What happen, happens to one twin happens to the other. That's right. And so the first, the Aubrey character, who is like the, you know, was the twin who stayed with the rich family. She was unabducted. And while she was being mutilated by a serial killer, the Dakota character who was, you know, had a drug addict mother and was working in a, you know, as an adult dancer was having the same injuries happen to her. That's right. And her, like, finger fell off. And she's like, fingers just fall off sometimes, right? Yeah. <laughs> She was, like, getting ready to go on stage at the strip club, I think. Or not, yeah, and, like, her finger fell off. And she's like, oh, I just cut myself. And right, wrapped the finger up yeah. and then went out and did her dance. Um, so, yeah, that's, and then, you know, she finds out the Dakota character sort of pieces together what happens, uses her, like, she's having visions about what's happening. She follows the visions and is able to rescue the um aubrey the aubrey character out of a glass coffin coffin with her prosthetic hand yeah um 
it's and and like we're making it sound bizarre. It's more bizarre than that. It's a really odd film. Yeah. Like when it came out, it was kind of at like Lindsay Lohan was trying to like make a big comeback. And I had forgotten about this, but like she went into the hospital during the making of the movie and then she got an appendectomy and then the appendectomy became infected. Um, yeah. And there's all these rumors that she was like, and then she went into a rehabilitation, a rehab place for a month. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I thought she was actually pretty good in the movie. Like, well, I think you and I both like love Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. And, and I, I want her to, su- 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 yeah. I want her to succeed. Right. Yeah. I, um, She's a very talented actress who's just kind of had a weird career. Um, I mean, we watched her friggin' Hallmark Christmas movie where she was playing the ski person. So, yeah. yeah. Um, the budget was estimated to be twelve million. It made three point five million on mm-hmm. open, opening weekend. And eventually, the top gross worldwide was nine point seven million. So, it didn't make its money back. Um, and. Won a lot of Razzies. Run, won a lot of Razzies. I think, like, I, I feel like had this movie, had you been, like, at home one night, and you were watching USA Up all night, <laughs> and this movie came on, and Shannon Tweed was in it, you'd been like, this is a really good USA Up all night movie. Yeah. It was, um, and the, I think the other thing you and I talked about is, like, there was an interesting movie in there somewhere. Right. But. Mm. It was, yeah. I mean, I would, would not recommend yeah, would not um, recommend. It was a movie. It's fun if you're one of those people like us that like to hate watch movies and hate watch bad movies. It was it was like what is some bad movies? They're just so bad that it's like you're it's, like you're like I just you fall wasted sleep during or it. like you're like I wait I'll never get that time back. Yeah, I mean we'll never get the I know who killed me time back, but it was a kind of an enjoyable time. Oh, and something that the YouTuber that I watched, I wish I don't could remember who that was and give them credit but there was someone who or the youtube review of it mm. that i was watching and i had forgotten that she like she she, she and her boyfriend mm-hmm. like after she was found or something or was mm. this before she was found it must have been before she was found like she she's hanging out with her boyfriend mm-hmm. and her mom at her mom's house she lives with her mom mm-hmm. and like her mom walks in on them making out, and then they go upstairs and have sex, and the mom sits there and listens to them having sex. Yeah. Like, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, it's it weird. Just, it was a lot of weird and, like, boundaries and... Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we just looked up <laughs> what we're watching for the next time. So we did a random number generator, and it's the movies from 1989. Mm-hmm. Best Picture is Driving Miss Daisy, which I've seen several times. Mm-hmm. The worst picture. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Oh god, it's so bad. Is that the one where they go to the center of the universe and find God? Mm-hmm. Oh my god. It's, <laughs> it is. I remember John, seeing... So John and I are probably me more than you, although you're a huge Star I, Trek. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm like, my favorite television show of all time that I will watch over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Anytime you ask me, Scott, what is your favorite TV show? It's Star Trek The Next Generation. Right. My favorite television show. Yeah. Um, I, I It's it's a it's a close second for me. I know it's my favorite TV show for all time, but I really like it. Yeah. Um, we have friends who like it. We're doing a Voyager watch well, right we're now. We're watching Voyager right now because he's never seen it all the way through. Yeah. But um, Star Trek V, The Undiscovered... No, no. The Final Frontier. Final Fr- Undiscovered Country is good. Yeah. 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 Um, this but even odd Star Trek yeah. curse. Um, yeah, this one's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we will watch those for our next podcast. Hopefully not eight months from now. Correct. Um, we should have a watch party with all of our Trek friends and watch that together. That's true. So, which all we right, have well, quite a few. If anybody's left still watching, thank you so much. And we'll see you again soon. All right. Bye. Bye.